Hello everyone, in this video we will be talking about the fat soluble vitamin, vitamin K. So vitamin K is nothing but K for coagulation, right. So to prevent the blood loss, there is a process called coagulation. So for that coagulation, the additive or aiding substance you require that is vitamin K. So in uh, like uh, Greek, K is like coagulation. So that's why they said K, right. So the other names for vitamin K, anti-hemorrhagic factor, okay, specific coenzyme function. That means vitamin K, otherwise it will be acting as a specific coenzyme. See, uh, when you see the other fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A, D, E, they don't have any coenzymatic function. But here vitamin K do have coenzymatic function, right. So this way it is unique compared with the other fat soluble vitamins. And as I mentioned earlier, it's required for coagulation. So chemistry, so to talk about chemistry, so vitamin K is of three types, okay, phylloquinone, minoquinone and minadione, right. There are three types and out of these three, vitamin K1, K2, K3, vitamin K, K1 is known as phylloquinone, okay, vitamin K2 is minoquinone and vitamin K3 is minadione. So vitamin K1, K2, phylloquinone and minoquinone both are naturally occurring in food substances, okay, in nature. But the, for the commercial purpose, for commercial use, in lab we can synthesize vitamin K that is vitamin K3 minadione which is synthetic form. Okay. So coming to discuss in detail about the structure of vitamin K, all vitamin K like K1, K2, K3 or naphthopinone derivatives, okay, they do have the rings, benzene ring attached like to with the methyl group in the place, okay, at the 20th carbon. Okay, it is like K1 and 30th carbon. Okay, the R is uh, K1 minoquinone, K2 that is, and R is H in case of minadione. Okay, so these are the variations. The um, the place of R will change respective of the vitamin K. In K1, it is a 20 carbon, and in K2, it is 30 carbon, and uh, here uh, R is H in case of minadione. You can see vitamin K1 which is present in plants and K2, minoquinone is present in intestinal bacteria. So intestinal bacteria, so this way it is unique. Okay, so far we have studied about fat soluble vitamins which can be taken in the food. Okay, so here first time the fat soluble vitamin K, okay, which is also present in intestinal bacteria. So in our gut, whatever the intestinal bacteria is there, could able to produce the vitamin K2. Okay, that is mina. So, minodione it is a synthetic product for uh, treatment of patients who are having hemorrhagic disorders. So, sources to talk about so all leafy vegetables like green colored fruits and vegetables are rich sources of vitamin K. You can see broccoli, uh, kiwi, uh, avocado, beans, grapes, oranges, apples, ki, uh, like uh, cucumber. So, all these are the rich sources of vitamin K. And required daily allowance of like how much amount of like Required daily allowance or like recommended daily allowance, okay, for vitamin K is 70 to 140 micrograms of vitamin K is required. So coming to the absorption transport, as we said, vitamin K is also vitamin K is also coming under fat soluble vitamins. So its absorption transport is also similar to the lipids, and it will be transported majorly by the lipoprotein chylomicron. And where it will be stored, it will be stored in the liver. So functions to talk about functions. It has got major role in blood coagulation. Apart from blood coagulation, it has got also making like bone mineralization. So in these two aspects, vitamin has got vitamin K has got its functions. So first to talk about blood coagulation. So how vitamin K involved in blood coagulation? So any protein synthesizes in our body needs post translation modifications. That means some modifications to be there. For that particularly synthesized protein. Similarly, the clotting factors in our body, they are also protein in nature, they are all synthesized by the liver. Okay, so after their synthesis, there should be some additions. Okay, so to bring about the post translational modifications of certain blood clotting factors, vitamin K is required. Without vitamin K, they are, they are like so when they have synthesized like factor 2, factor 7, factor 9, and 10. So all these will be inactively synthesized. So to make them active, you require vitamin K. Without vitamin K, they cannot be active. So there is no proper coagulation. 
okay so they all synthesize inactive gymogen gymogen is nothing but inactive enzyme okay so gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid residues how it will be so wherever glutamic acid is there so it will promote calcium to go there and form a mesh like structure okay so the binding site is like calcium ion so i will show you that you see here in the diagrammatic representation so glutamic acid so which will be like a gamma carboxylase so gamma glutamyl carboxylase so at this point ch2coh calcium can go and bind okay calcium having a two valencies so it will go and bind with glutamic acid so and the enzyme is gamma glutamyl carboxylase so now this carboxylated protein okay involved in conversion of hydroquinone to epoxide form okay hydroquinone to epoxide form so two electrons will be depleted added it's a reverse uh, sorry it is a reversible reaction okay and when this calcium forms mesh like structure which will be helpful in clotting so you see here so all the factors like uh, inactive uh, 2 7 9 and 10 okay proteins uh, s c z so they are all synthesized as inactive form so when vitamin k is coming to the action it converts like gamma carboxylation of glutamic residues of all these pre i mean pre forms of uh, substances uh, clotting factors and uh, when they get carboxylated okay so they will become activated so they will be involved in clotting of blood so once the donation process takes place this uh, vitamin k okay and this inactive vitamin k has to be converted into active form so by the mechanisms like vitamin k1 2 3 epoxide reductase enzyme and vitamin k1 quinone reductase enzyme so they are all nadph dependent enzymes so this way again you will be regenerating vitamin k so coming to the functions vitamin k is required for proper bone health so as i mentioned along with the blood co blood coagulation for bone mineralization also uh, like how mineralization the carboxylation reaction how it is taking place for blood coagulation same way in bone mineralization also carboxylation is must and this carboxylation is be taking place at the glutamic acid level and residues of osteocalcin and calcium will be binding to the two proteins calcium binding protein okay so calbumin so calcium binding protein will be accumulating two proteins in the bone so for optimal bone growth you require vitamin d calcium and k so all these three required for white uh, for optimal bone strength so vitamin d and vitamin 2 calcium is required for bone mineralization vitamin d has to maintain the calcium levels okay and it increases the mineralization and vitamin k2 is also for carboxylation reactions it uh, promotes the mineralization of the bone so you see here all the osteocalcins which are binding carboxylation reaction you can see in the picture vitamin k promotes the carboxylation of these osteocalcins and that way it increases the bone mineralization okay movement of more calcium into the bone so intestine so vitamin d promoting the like calcium inactive osteocalcin so this is a protein so this osteocalcin will be converted to astro active osteocalcin and more calcium deposition in the bone so this osteocalcin promotes calcium deposition in the bone so deficiency there are a lot of deficiencies like uh, you cannot control the i mean like uh, blood loss so there will be uncontrolled blood loss so impaired absorption of lipids sterile bacterial flora because our intestinal uh, bacteria will be able to synthesize some amount of vitamin k so in case of like uh, if you are using antibiotics these antibiotics will kill the intestinal bacteria so no vitamin k will be synthesized so it is also give deficiency and futures like hemorrhagic disease of newborn continuous bleeding prolonged prothrombin time and delayed clotting time so all these are the characteristics of vitamin k deficiency so symptoms like bruising from bleeding into the skin nose bleeds bleeding gums bleeding in stomach blood in urine blood in stool cherry black stool extremely heavy menstrual bleeding okay in infants may results intracranial hemorrhage why because the clotting factors are not converting into active one so because of this inactive clotting factors there is no clotting mechanism okay 
so these are all happening because of deficiency of vitamin k so for proper blood clotting to prevent the blood loss you require ample amounts of vitamin k in your body so here you can see the pictures bruising you might have seen in the for, for uh, like a few people so how their uh, like skin will be like red in color so nose bleed so this is also one of the symptom and bleeding gums so all these are the characteristic features of vitamin k deficiency so talking about antagonist jucumarol and warfarin are the two antagonists of vitamin k so remember in mcqs and in uh, competitive exams they will ask what are the vitamin uh, antagonists for vitamin k jucumarol and warfarin which prevents the vitamin k activity so where and all it they prevent the activity so warfarin will prevent the enzyme vitamin k epoxide reductase okay that way it will prevent the conversion of uh, what to say uh, active vitamin k to inactive vitamin k so that's all about vitamin k thanks for the listening thank you